And thank you for joining us on the road to COP27. Now, the 27th session of the Conference of Parties, also known as COP27, is this year taking place in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt from the 7th to the 18th of November 2022. Now, the COP27 conference expects nations to capture and assess their progress towards enhancing resilience and helping the most vulnerable communities, as well as giving updates on mitigation and adaptation. Now, Zambia is participating in this conference. And of course, Zambia is the current chair of the African Group of Negotiators. And so its participation is very crucial in this conference. Now, let's track some progress made by some key stakeholders in Zambia as we are on the road to COP27. This program is proudly brought to you by WWF Zambia. I'm your host, Mary Mwikisa. And joining me in studio right now is the country director for WWF Zambia, Nachila Lankombo. Nachila, thank you for joining us on the road to COP27. Thank you so much, Mary, for having you. us. Good to see you too. All right. Now, COP27 um, is upon us. Um, as an organization, you should be excited because uh, it's a platform for you to, to talk. Well, um, as an organization, I wouldn't say we're excited. Mm -hmm. As an organization, I should say that we're really happy it's here because right here in Zambia, in, on the African continent, mm -hmm. from COP26 to COP27, exactly. we've seen firsthand the devastating impacts of climate mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for us to engage our leaders, including leaders from the rich north that have contributed the most to what we're facing today as impacts of climate mm -hmm. change. Uh, why is this conference very important for a country like Zambia? The conference is very important for a country of, like Zambia for two reasons. One, uh, we're living through a climate crisis right now. And how it manifests itself in Zambia is that we're not just ha seeing increasing temperatures. We're seeing many parts of Zambia having water stress. We've seen in the last growing season uh, a big part of our agriculture belt not being able to produce enough food because mm -hmm. of drought. Mm -hmm. We've seen so many communities being affected uh, by floods and their property being destroyed. So this is a platform where we are going to discuss as Zambians, as Africans, in terms of the cost we are paying for climate change with parties mm -hmm. whose economies have contributed the most to the emissions that have led to these uh, temperature rises. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you've spoken about the fact that it's affecting our food security as mm -hmm. a country. How are you responding to this as an organization? So climate change is not a new phenomenon. Um, as WWF, we have been working at several levels in terms of uh, responding to the challenge of climate change. So the first level is that we've been working with communities that are drought prone mm -hmm. and flood prone mm -hmm. to help them to come up with uh, strategies for them to adapt uh, to climate change. So for example, uh, in southwest Zambia, uh, which is part of Western province, mm -hmm. uh, we have developed um, a, a conservation agriculture program, mm -hmm. which is a program that has assisted farmers to remain productive, even okay. though from one year to the next year, uh, they have received less rainfall. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also included in that program um, uh, education component, training component, mm -hmm. to help them to uh, basically use less land for them to still remain productive. Okay. And this program has since expanded mm -hmm. to um, Eastern province. So we're helping to build resilience. Secondly, we're also looking at what are the bigger uh, uh, pressure points for ecosystems that are really driving uh, climate change, mm -hmm. but are also driving um, a, a leading sort of impacts to economic activities. We've been working with, with the private sector um, to also look at how uh, some of their uh, economic activities, large-scale economic activities, have been affected. So we've been running an origination facility okay. where um, you know companies that are into agriculture mainly can apply uh, for funding for them to adapt, right? To mm -hmm. look at ways in which they can shift their production methods so that they're less dependent 
on uh, on water, you know, high, high volumes of water. And thirdly, we've worked very closely with the government of the Republic of Zambia to do two things, try and get local voices in okay. communities that are most impacted by climate change to influence uh, policy making. So we've had and supported representatives of community organizations mm -hmm. uh, to influence uh, the drafting of the climate bill. Uh, for example, so our work really has been at several levels. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm glad we've spoken about um, food uh, uh, security uh, at production level. Mm -hmm. Let's also touch on um, our consumption methods. Mm -hmm. Is this something that has an impact uh, on our well-being as a people? Uh, because during the rainy season, for example, you see a lot of foods produced, and then most of it goes to waste because w we fail to, to preserve it. And then before you know it, people need more food. Actually, globally and in Zambia, mm -hmm. um, the way in which f the food system is managed, or agriculture is managed, contributes a lot to emissions. Mm -hmm. So we need to do uh, certain actions okay. at the farm. We also need to look at the entire food system. Mm -hmm. We need to be looking at infrastructure that is made available for farmers to be able uh, to store what they produce and they can dispose of it at the right time. Right, because what happens now is that sometimes a farmer would produce a lot, maybe get a bit desperate, mm -hmm. dispose of the things, and if every farmer is making the same decision, then the market is overwhelmed, and then that food actually goes to work mm -hmm. waste. Right. So for us to be successful, we just don't need to look at the farm. We need to look at indeed production and mm -hmm. consumption, mm -hmm. the whole system. To what extent is it helping? Because if half the food goes to waste, it means that the farmer has to go back again. Mm -hmm and use more of the natural resource. Mm -hmm. And you know when we deplete the natural resource, we also take away that buffer that protects us from the impacts of climate change. All right. Now let's, let's talk um, about COP27. We know that an issue that has been pending even from COP26 is the $100 billion pledge uh, from what uh, commonly referred to as the emitters. <laughs> even though everyone is emitting, but the high emitters. Yes. And uh, we, failure to fulfill this pledge. What messages are you hoping for in COP27, uh, especially that it's happening in Africa and, and we, we experience the impacts of climate change more? Okay. So first of all, uh, what our message at COP27 is that enough of words. We want to see action. Mm -hmm. We want to see the delivery of finance. We would like to be able to see that uh, these countries or the high emitters actually put down the money that they owe countries that are impacted by climate change. In fact, the debt now is at 600 billion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When the commitment was made, it was about 100, 100 billion, billion, but now it's at, at 600, 600 billion. So that has to be delivered. Secondly, uh, when you talk about loss and damage, and trying to understand loss and damage within the context of climate change. You see it, every African country has a story uh, to tell. We've already paid upfront on the impacts of climate change. So it's important that we have the institutional mechanism created, a facility mm -hmm. where countries can set aside funds that will go to support countries that are impacted by these devastating impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. At the end of the COP, what message do you hope uh, will be that solid voice as you come back to Zambia, you will be assured of um, a positive, a sustainable, and uh, an assured way forward um, as, as we manage the impacts of climate change as a country? Well, as WWF, we're expecting three things. Okay. The first thing is ambition. Ambition. We expect ambition from our leaders okay. in terms of improving yes. the N N NDC targets. Secondly, we are also expecting, in a way, uh, finance. Okay. We need to come back with the money on the table. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, we need to r see that locally-led solutions mm -hmm. are funded for scaling up. The challenge with the fight against climate change is that the no local knowledge is there, yes. but it does not attract the investment that is needed to scale up these interventions so that they have impact at scale. So at COP27, as WWF Global, we're expecting the COP to be an inclusive COP, yes. a COP that's looking at communities and countries that are most affected and taking their lead and their steer in terms of where the money should go to. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on the road to COP27. Well, thank you so much. So uh, wish, wish you all the best. Yes, wish us luck. Wish us luck. Yes. Thank you so much. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But with your support mm -hmm. and the support of your colleagues in the media, then we should be able uh, 
uh, to put enough pressure mm -hmm. on decision makers to take responsibility. All right, putting enough pressure on decision makers it is. And of course, my takeaway is ambition, finance, and locally led solutions to be funded. Thank you for joining us on the road to COP27. Thank <laughs> you.